in the jump for the shit All top when I speak, all cap with the speech Till they caught up in the rapture I'm so out of line with the phrase game Let's take a break, been a long day Hit your line with your fall through with the light sticks Maybe help me spark the eye In my backyard in uh, San Diego And I've got my humble hustle shirt on uh, I, before whew, two, three years ago Was not humble at all and just want to share a little background of me and that I everything I touched uh, I grew up really poor in Oklahoma but everything I touched uh, turned to gold uh, pretty much everything I tried to do ever wanted to do just happened so my whole thought process on just people in general and myself was that other people are weak-minded and they don't know how to manifest. I didn't know the word manifest uh, too much, uh, what it meant and stuff before two or three years ago. Um, but they don't know how to create things in their life because they are weak minded and don't know what they're doing. They're not as smart as me, not as good looking as me, not as uh, uh, funny as me. All these things that I'm better than, better than, better than. When in actuality, I was super insecure from my childhood, uh, severe insecurity from being abandoned uh, by my father and unconscious about it, totally um, overcompensating in so many ways to overcome that insecurity and to, to really mask it is, is more the, not overcome it, but um, mask it with uh, trying to be better looking, trying to be wealthier than other everybody else smarter funnier sexier everything that goes along with the ego and trying to do all those things so anyway uh i stopped drinking well i my wife had had enough of me um at the time three three and a half years ago trip to canada tons of whiskey um flirting with women right in front of her kind of blacking out on it, not really knowing what I was doing, um, <clears throat> and just being completely disrespectful to her um, in so many ways, and of course, disrespecting myself in that, and she called it. She said, that's it. I'm done. I'm out, and it was the best, looking back now, it's the best thing that ever happened to me, is her setting that clear, solid boundary that that was it and that was really for me that was my bottom that was uh um knowing that i'm losing this amazing person and she's out i was just like it was a huge eye opener for me and so the humble uh humble pie hit me absolutely right in the face as big as you can hit me um so yeah, stop, I worked my tail off, started figuring out how to not drink anymore, um, researching everything about it, and really just going deep within myself to figure it all out. And um, once I did that, it took me about a year of, uh, of really getting into all that. But then once the alcohol was really totally out of my system, all this unconscious fear of abandonment started coming up and I realize now that the alcohol was suppressing all of that uh, anxiety and unconscious fear I didn't know at all I had no idea that I was that I had this unconscious anxiety from childhood I thought with a doctorate in, in psychology I thought that I had researched everything and knew everything about that and myself and had already dealt with it and I hadn't at all um, I had just read books and so yeah it was my turn to experience it um <clears throat> so the wife after a year still i was a dry drunk is what i call it i was still attacking her manipulative um everything the ego does to try to control and blame and shame and throw guilt at other people um i now know i'm 100 percent responsible for the failure of my marriage. I didn't know how to set boundaries. I didn't know how to communicate. Um, I was unconscious with, with so much fear inside of me. And for her to 
be as strong as she was in that for our kids and to to set her clear boundary to say no more no more of this no more attacking me no more blaming me no more shaming me and basically leave me alone i'm I, i'm good you're you got issues and you need to go deal with them so that's what i did and uh but then she really said okay after a year of me not drinking okay we still need to separate and that is when the massive i mean i'm talking about i went into the depths of hell literally um of fear of abandonment and went into a psychotic mixed with spiritual uh episode the last about three days three or four days and existential crisis all wrapped up into a big ball of mess inside my head but at the same time it was my what i considered um my ego cracking and and opening and it was beautiful and traumatic at the same time so uh, i ended up in a 30-day uh spiritual kind of mental health treatment center uh for, i was living in hawaii at the time we were and i it was in san diego uh the wife decided to take the kids back to san diego where she's originally from with family um during this really difficult time so checked into there did 30 days in treat inpatient treatment and the amount that I learned in that 30 days of humility and uh, how everybody's on their own journey, nobody's smarter than, better than, in all these things in any way uh, was, was in just incredible. Um, and so that is where the healing really began. I got really vulnerable and just started telling everybody my issues as best i could it was difficult because i had a lot of ego a lot of you know narcissistic traits i wasn't narcissist uh anything like that that's a whole we throw that word around a lot in psychology today like dime store psychology but it is narcissism is a very very serious uh, uh disorder so when somebody's being highly egotistical that's a that's the normal thing but to true narcissism is is a is a whole different thing they they cannot apologize ever and nothing is ever that person's fault so which i had a lot of that and i had a lot of, i had a lot of difficulty apologizing and stuff before and seeing my uh taking responsibility for my stuff and but yeah it's uh so that's the humble hustle little part of me um coming out of that was beautiful and then though i still had to i mean it's a rewiring like and i'm still working today on it every day i wake up and i say how can i thank you for helping me heal and thank you for helping me uh help serve and help others that's that's my first thing when i wake up is is thank you again for this day helping me heal and help serve others and that's what this is all about here with you so let's get into it with uh, a question from Shane from New York is this question. Uh, my mom got sober through AA. I just went to a meeting with her and it didn't feel comfortable to me at all. My mom says it's the only way to get sober. What other way is there, if any? All right, Shane, so uh, New York, yeah, I love it. Um, I go there though and I find myself in the park. Um, all the time I find myself in nature uh, I'll do a show or two and some awesome dinners you know but then I just go straight to Central Park and I'm cruising around in nature I'm, I'm a I'm a nature lover uh, for sure so it's funny I, I, I laugh but seeing the beautiful buildings around with the nature I, I love that part of it um, but it's overwhelming to me uh, as far as like energy and people and and stuff in, in general so I have to be pretty quick when I go in there um, that, that, that I've experienced. I've never stayed for more than like five days, but uh, awesome people there. My niece is there. Love her so much. She's amazing. Um, so let's get to it. My mom got sober through AA. Yeah, I got to give AA so much beautiful credit, props. I mean, what they did for the time that they created that and then up to now has been absolutely amazing. I have personal family who have gotten out, become alcohol free through that, uh, my grandpa, my dad, and my brother, and a cousin of mine, 
Um, so I have so much love and respect for AA. Um, then I also know that AA needs to evolve um, and, and has to evolve, in my opinion, because if they don't, they're, it's going gonna, it's gonna to go obsolete. And I'll get into that as, as to why. Um, <clears throat> so it's, it's the, your mom getting sober through AA and, and bless her heart. Uh, absolutely awesome. So there's a Zen saying that says there are as many ways to the one as there are people and lives on earth. And I am of the same uh, thinking and stuff with, with uh, alcohol addiction, that there are as many ways to become alcohol free as there are addicts, uh, people who have become addicted on earth. And so what that means is you, Shane, are the way. You are your own, you have had your own background, your own lives. I, I believe in reincarnation and that we're, this is not, this is a very temporary suit, this body that we're wearing. And it's, it's very temporary and we have, we are eternal uh, inside and we are all gods. The God in me loves, honors, recognizes the God in you. And so with that, you've had your whole history coming to this point and your consciousness, your pain, your uh, history, life has culminated in who you are and what you are right now. So you, no matter if, let's say you're even in AA, your experience through AA is going to be different than anybody else's in AA. You're going to find your own way in AA. Um, there are now, as far as like methods and things like that. Yeah, there's, there's, there's becoming lots of different things out there, including me and this. Um, and so, but if anything, anybody ever tells you there's only one way to get to love God, the universe consciousness, I always tell them to run the other way because uh, you are the way and you will find your connection to love and spirit and the universe in your time and your way. Um, and we don't want to force anything and we don't want to resist anything. That is going to be the key with this uh, alcohol addiction. If something doesn't feel comfortable to you, then listen, your, your body has infinite wisdom inside that you need to listen to. So if there's something coming up for you there, I, I really recommend you listen to what that is and feel it and, and go in and, and find out what it is. Um, so, okay, let's talk about the history a little bit of AA. 1935 is when uh, AA began. And this was the same time in medical, we gotta get our, our, what we're looking at here back then. This is the same time, this exact same year of when lobotomies began in science. And so mental health, they literally thought that the mechanical, it's a mechanical approach. It's, it's a piece, it's a part. We're seeing bodies and we're, we're seeing brains at this time. And all we have at this time is x-rays to look at. So x-rays only show gray, which is just like a little bit of tissue in there, uh, black, uh, which is space and then white, which is bones. And so we didn't really have at the time technology to see what was happening in the brain and things like that. And now the imaging is just spectacular. The, the new imaging that we have is like unbelievable. And so we're able to see what's going on in the mind. Um, and so with, with alcohol addiction back then, they, you know, they started saying, okay, defective people, they couldn't figure out, you know, what piece of the brain, because there is none, um, causes alcohol addiction. They thought there's no way that uh, alcohol could be bad uh, because at the time, the collective consciousness, like today even, uh, is that alcohol, they, they have this collective unconscious belief that alcohol is good for you, it makes you happy, kills pain, makes you dance, uh, all these things. So, and some people can drink it fine and then some people have problems with it um that was that was the thought back then and it's still the primary foundation of aa today 
which is what I'm saying they need to absolutely 100% evolve from, um, or they're not going to have many people at their meetings anymore uh, if they don't. And I really, I pray and I hope and that they do evolve and look through the microscope at the new science and get away from what, what is called the defective theory. So Shane, you are not defective. I'm going to say that again. You are 100% inside of you. There is a power that is eternal, that is love, that is peace, that is the most beautiful thing. It, it's not a thing. It's, it's not of this world. Um, it, is, it is that eternalness. You, it was never born. It will never die. It is whole. It is complete. You at your truest essence, we are 100% complete as we are now. There is nothing wrong with us on, in, that, in that level. Okay, so now we get into uh, defective. How are we defective when it comes to drinking alcohol? How can some people handle their alcohol, is what they say, and how can some people not? Um, and it's basically going into where we uh, have, like I was talking about, have our past and our histories that create this experience in us where some people drink it and immediately, boom, they get addicted. That It hits all their levels of what they want and need to kill the pain and, and wipe out all that thinking of fear, anxiety, depression. Uh, some people, it takes a while longer. Um, and I've used this example already with my brother and I. My brother immediately was addicted like really fast. And then I was a slow drip process. Um, I looking back, I probably was addicted by, uh, you know, out of college drinking in, in corporate America sales, um, probably around 25, 26 years old is whenever I think it probably really started. Um, so with AA, um, and not feeling comfortable there, I understand that fully, uh, uh, well as well. I'm going to go, I'm going to take this over here and talk some more. Um, sitting down so when we we talk about um, AA and not feeling comfortable there I just to do this and to talk to you guys about it I just went and did my own uh, AA online about a year ago just to check it out again I had I had gone to meetings with my grandpa back in the Midwest uh, you know when I was like six seven years old and all I remember is um, a lot of smoke. Oh my God! Back then, it was like cigarette smoke everywhere because the uh, all the cigarette ads were still able to run and go and tell us all their lies about how sexy it was and how it's going to make us happier, look cooler, and uh, make us feel better, and all these things. Does that remind you anything about alcohol? You ever seen any ads like that? And it's the exact same thing. Big alcohol is doing the exact same thing now. Um, but we're still in that collective consciousness. And so it's our fault as well of believing that alcohol, it does, it, that, it, that lies, it makes you better, sexier, healthier, happier, um, dance better, all these things that we have in our collective consciousness underneath thinking that, and it's, it's in our programs. So we got to get that out, out, out. It does. It doesn't. There's no benefit to alcohol whatsoever. With who you are at your truest essence, that joy, that peace, that is within, that will surface and come out once we we get through the alcohol addiction. Take that away. Then we start working on ourself inside, and all the fear and anxiety, anything like that that comes up. Um, and then we get to the joy. We get to the peace and the love of the universe that is within us, that is everything out there. But to get to that place of peace and joy uh, that I really feel like I finally am now, after three and a half years of working on myself every day, all day, every day, um, it is one of those things that it, you gotta do the work, just like anything, and you gotta stop masking the pain that is there. and. For those of you that this whole defective theory, so 70% of heavy drinkers um, do have childhood trauma, things like that. 
30% have had no childhood trauma. So we can't sit there and say, oh, all people who are addicted to alcohol are defective in their childhood or in their genetics or their personality, um, something like that. It is where we have to know that 30% is a large number of people. So if you, t if you took 10 people out there and you stood them up, there, there's three of those people who, who had no childhood trauma, who had no um, issues at all with their, their background, and they got addicted because alcohol is an addictive substance. Alcohol, once you consume enough of it, I'm going to say this a bunch, anyone will get addicted, and three out of ten get addicted anyway. Uh, seven out of ten, you know, are have childhood trauma, and that's, that's a fact. I got my peanut back here. Can you guys see her? There you go. Hi, peanut. That's peanut butter. She's a year old. She is a Bernese uh, Bernadoodle, a Bernese mountain dog mixed with a uh, poodle. Whoa, there you go. There you go. Hi, hi. Yeah, you're a good girl. You're a good girl. Yeah. All right, I'm doing, doing a show. All right, there you go. Fluff dog. Oh my gosh. My first long haired dog. I had bird dogs and stuff growing up in Oklahoma. I always took care of them and uh, never dealt with all this hair. Oh, but she doesn't shed. She's hypoallergenic. Uh, she's super smart. She's super lovely. So she's great. Um, so back to AA, yeah, and defective theory. Um, so just know that with the defective theory, you are not uh, defective. And you will get addicted to alcohol no matter what with it. Um, so this is what AA has to come off of. And saying Dr. Silkworth and Bill Wilson... Back in the day, they, in 1935, they came up with this allergy theory, which is basically that some people, a certain class of people, have an allergy to alcohol. And they said that, so, so basically only a, few, only a certain class of individuals. Others don't have this issue. And so that is where they come in and they, you got to go in and say, I... I am an alcoholic and I am, you're basically saying I am defective. I have this allergy. And what that does is it says you are incurable. You're an incurable diseased alcoholic. This is a very, very incorrect statement. Uh, you are already cured inside. You are already 100% whole and complete and so there, you are so much more than any addiction. I don't care what kind of addiction it is. You're so much more than any kind of mental illness. You're so much more than any abandonment fears, um, anything that's ever happened to you. You are uh, eternal and you are love and you are joy. We just got to get you to remember who and what you are at your truest essence. And you don't have to like... It's just an awakening. It's not a. It's not a learning. Uh, it's a. It's an awakening to what you already are. Um, so with that history, I. Uh, oh, I went into my own AA online meeting, and they they kept focusing the camera on me. And I love the people. They were compassionate. Love them. They're just doing the absolute best they can, and and I appreciate them so much. Um, and but it would come to me and it, they did this four times with putting the camera, you know, it was a zoom meeting. So it was during COVID and, uh, it wasn't in person, but they kept putting the, the camera on me and I kept being like, just said, and Dustin, would you like to say anything? And they, they wanted me to say, hi, I'm Dustin. I'm an alcoholic. And I, I just kept sitting there and saying, hi guys, how are you? And I knew exactly what they wanted me to do. And, uh, Inside, I was wanting to scream, I am not an alcoholic. I used to drink alcohol, and now I see it as disgusting, just like anyone who used to smoke cigarettes and now sees it as disgusting and is cured of their cigarette addiction. I have zero desire to drink any alcohol. It is, it is jet fuel. It is car fuel. It is disgusting. I gag a little bit whenever I even like really think about drinking it even when it's like these people you know around they're drinking Camus wines opus ones all this you know super nice stuff and i'm just like look that's 13 percent ethanol uh in that in that liquid 
and I just visualize, I'm like, oh my God, 13% in that glass is a ton of ethanol. And I, so the whole thing around, and then they're spending, you know, $40 a, a glass for this stuff. Um, and I'm like, man, just, it's just this unconsciousness of where we've become with alcohol and alcohol addiction. So yeah, that was my experience. And then they'd come back to me and four times around and me being like, I am not an alcoholic. I am cured. And so that's the thing with the, the difference in, in the methods and, and ways. Um, <clears throat> and, and the belief is that you are, you are your way. You are cured. You are uh, already there. We just have to wake you up to the fact that alcohol doesn't benefit you in any way um you are not you never have to say that you're an alcoholic you never have to believe that you have an incurable disease for the rest of your life you never have to white knuckle this thing you never have to be on a, a wagon and you're on and off the wagon you're you're craving alcohol for the rest of your life but you can't have it other people oh they feel sorry for you no None of that. Zero. You will have a, this joy and this, this whole uh, different outlook on life that will amaze you whenever, you, whenever it clicks. And Bill Wilson, uh, he called it his white light moment with um, him waking up out of the slumber and the, the alcohol matrix, what I call the alcohol matrix, and being plugged into that. He said it was a white light moment. <clears throat> and for me, uh, you'll, you'll have your white light moment. Um, it's nothing, it's no, no miracle thing that happens and like, um, all this stuff. What it is, is your unconscious mind is coming together with what you know is true about alcohol, which is that it causes cancer. It, uh, makes you have DUIs, hurts people, hurts other kids. You know, it's, it's bad. It's bad for you. It's unhealthy. It's this, this drug that we all know consciously, but we're, we're unconsciously addicted to it. And once that comes together, that's that white light moment that we are going to reprogram, rewire your beliefs and thoughts and unbrainwash you from all the brainwashing that big alcohol has done with advertising. And then uh, from our, from our tens of thousands of years of, of drinking this liquid to kill our psychological pain, um, and thinking that it, it gives us more fun and stuff. Um, so yeah, with, with Dr. Silkworth and Bill Wilson, um, just know they were doing the best that they could at the time, but now it is absolutely time for them to, for AA to evolve and look into what I call, you know, like Galileo and his telescope, uh, the priests would not look into their, the telescope back then. And it took them, I don't know how many years to actually look into it. Um, and they, they put Galileo in jail for life. And he's just saying, he's like, look guys, just look into the telescope and see that we are actually revolving around the sun and the sun is not revolving around us. And they finally did do that and it made them uh, more spiritual. They thought that it would ruin the church, that it would be the end of the church and all this stuff. It's not the case at all. Here again, we're, I'm just saying look in through the my AA, look in through the microscope, look at the new tech, new science, the new, uh, and, and it's going to show that the brain gets addicted to this substance that is addictive. That's all it is. It's super simple. This alcohol is a 100% addictive substance to 100% of biological bodies. If enough is consumed, um, nobody's defective when it comes to, uh, alcohol and addiction. And there's not some people, some certain class of people who have an allergy. This is a phantom allergy. This is not a real <laughs> thing that they made up. It was a guess, a best guess in 1935 with the technology they had at what was the, you know, problem with certain people becoming addicted and certain people not. And that best guess has now been uh, proven through science to be an incorrect guess. And so 
Bill Wilson, I know if he was alive today, he was born in 1971. I have a very big love for this man. I actually possibly think I could be the reincarnation of Bill Wilson. He was born in 1971. I, I mean, he, was, he died in 1971, sorry, and I was born in 1971. So reincarnation, who knows, right? Nobody ever knows. It's fun to think about. Um, and I just feel like I'm carrying the torch on uh, for helping cure alcohol addiction. This was his passion, his love, and it is mine as well. Um, and to help other people and, and give service to overcome it myself and to actually be cured, um, and then give back. And I know, I really, really feel like if Bill Wilson were alive today, he would go into a meeting screaming, and yelling, being like, you guys, it's not us. It's not us. We are not the problem. Alcohol is addictive to everyone. And there would be this huge like release of, of happiness and joy. We are not like crazy. We are not incurable. We are, we are people who got addicted to an addictive substance because we had, yeah, we have past issues. We have, we have all this other stuff, but we are, we are not different when it comes to getting addicted. Uh, if we take it, any amount of people and start feeding them alcohol, some are going to get addicted really quick. Some are going to get addicted later, but all one, all of them will get addicted at some point biologically to an addictive substance. And so he would be going in there elated to share that new news. And then I think he would get really vulnerable and do his share like they do and tell his background and the meeting would continue. And, you know, he, he had fear of abandonment issues like I did. Um, his mom and dad divorced. So, and he, I think they both ended up leaving him. Um, and so that's why he got in the, you know, his, his alcohol, he was masking that pain. Didn't know it. Very similar uh, to my story as well and my background. Um, and he would, he would share his background and then say, okay, you know, who's next? Who else wants to come up? And share their background and let's let's talk about it from here and it would continue on and I want AA to continue on I just want them they must change or, or it will dissolve because uh, I've talked to AA people about my uh, I have a book coming out and I they all say if you do this AA will you know probably not survive uh, and I'm like no that's that's not the point of this at all it is if if AA will look into the microscope and then it will be better it will become it will evolve and become wonderful and have a new base theory that we are all uh, truest essence eternal and love and peace and joy and we are not defective and that biologically we are all going to get it if you consume enough alcohol, we are all going to be able, we all have the ability to get addicted to an addictive substance. And so, yeah, with AA, I'll talk about it more in other, other sessions, but Shane, um, I just want you to say, you know, there's other ways and you are the way, um, just, we're just going to keep waking you up, um, to who you are and what you are inside. And, but it, you can go to AA, man, you can go, you can do every way you want to do and just, but there's, there's things online, there's things, there's apps, there's one, there's like, I am sober app. I use that back in the day. I don't like the word sober. I'm definitely not, um, you know, what they in, in the dictionary, I've, I'll talk about it quite a bit. They say sober is, um, depressed, uh, low energy, um, sedated, uh, all this stuff, the joy, uh, I, I am alcohol free. I am a joyous alcohol free being and it, there's no sober in me. <laughs> no way. No how, uh, when it, when I look that up in the dictionary, I'm like, no, no, not somber, not sedate, not any of those things. Now, so, yeah, sometimes I'll, I'll feel a little low or whatever, but my essence at my, truest our essence is joy and peace and love and so but sober app uh i i 
I am sober app, uh, things like that. There's there's a few out there to help you keep rewiring. Annie Grace, love her uh, books and her uh, her uh, podcasts. Um, the Alan Carr uh, is really good. These are people who are all masters at uh, they they have had their experience and know that they are not defective and that is where I'm at as well is the how to control alcohol easily guru and it's a beautiful place to be uh, the God in me honors recognizes and loves the God in each of you and Shane I appreciate you submitting your question keep up the humble hustle and I'll see you guys next time.